Room 442 is presented by North Star Bets. That's a win. Welcome into Room 442. Sarah Peraria joined by James Sharman. Toronto FC draw Nashville nil-nil over the weekend. James, I feel like I'm watching the same match over and over again at this point. Fifth draw of the season yeah fifth draw I mean you can look at it that way I suppose mm -hmm. or you can look at it that they are unbeaten since mm. the opening game of the season right getting points points are important sitting in ninth still on the on the periphery of the playoff spots albeit dead early I I'll tell you one thing my golden rule in MLS mm -hmm. is I don't get concerned about playoff positioning until I can wear shorts to a match <laughs> all right until the weather gets better right it's a long summer um, now, sadly, I can't wear many shorts to matches this summer because they're not at home very much this mm -hmm. summer for, for a number of reasons. Um, I, I Listen, th th there's progress that you mentioned there. Th th there's progress. They're getting draws. They're getting clean sheets, right? Defensively, they're, they're learning. They, they're getting better. Um, but they are dropping points, and these are important points. But they're doing it all without their, their best player in Lorenzo Insigne, who's going to come back at some point soon with a whole whack of pressure on his shoulders because they have to start scoring more goals and being more clinical up top right you can't rely on Bernadeschi too much you know he had chances again this past weekend uh, great goalkeeping late in the game you know kept that uh, a draw for Nashville um, but yeah I, I know people are freaking out and, and TFC Nation freaks out quite easily <laughs> I'm not that concerned right now to be honest with you I, I think they'll get it sorted out um, I, I don't think we can really reassess our preseason predictions and observations we know what this team is um it's a brand new back line of course mm -hmm. new goalkeeper it'll take time to gel and, and i think we're seeing progress there yeah uh we'll get to bernardeski in a moment but just quickly about this narrative you know that they're unbeaten in six matches i think though the concern is that they're unbeaten but they're they, they have five draws this season and only one win <laughs> and the issue here is obviously scoring goals and keeping a lead and you know, last week we spoke to Matt Hedges, who even said, someone brought that up. They said, you know, you're unbeaten in five. And he said, yeah, but we need to win. Like, even yeah. you could tell he was tired of that narrative because they aren't getting the three points they need. They're just getting the one. That's why they are ninth. Um, how do you win? You win by scoring goals. So that's... Right? And how do you score goals? By having your best players available to you. Yeah. Diamande's out still. Yeah. Right? Um, I mentioned Insigne. There are problems up top. Mm -hmm. um, Akinola hasn't hasn't quite got the job done, you know, not not available every single week. So I, I really think that it'll be a matter of time before they start sticking goals past. It, early early MLS is weird, right? I mean Philadelphia, yeah. there's this wonderful team, a tenth at the table right now. Do you think they're freaking out? Probably, but I, I don't think well. most most you know observers, close observers, will be too concerned. You don't want to get too far away from the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cincinnati's had this great start to the season. They're, they're rolling at the moment. You don't want to see that gap grow too, too much, but mm -hmm. just going to stay in the hunt and, and, and be solid defensively and then build from there. Yeah, I think what Mikey and I spoke about a lot regarding this season is just how not deep that bench is. And that's mm -hmm. why we are seeing somebody like Lorenzo Insigne not be able to play and that gap is massive you have to get like, him healthy right yeah but and that's my concern he wasn't the healthiest when he came from napoli exactly right we shouldn't be surprised by this because yeah. look at his last couple of years at napoli um when he played he was wonderful right but mm -hmm. he missed a lot of action and when he signed that deal you know 15 million or whatever it is you know who knows exactly the, the, the numbers there that was what if he gets hurt because you're spending that much money on one player and then you throw in bernadeschi in the mix these are high price players what happens to the depth of your team right and, and you need to have tfc2 and, and the developmental the young players coming through and, and earning spots yeah and we haven't really seen that you know from from a big standpoint just yet so yeah i, I don't think we should be surprised what's happened so far but if he does come back and senior and gets back to top form we won't be talking about issues up front because they will score goals yeah well we saw cuello the spanish kid you know officially sign with tfc i mm -hmm. think that's good you know a young player somebody who's already had some experience as well i think that was great for them but really quickly as well how reliant are tfc on federico bernardeschi because <laughs> he's got three goals this season out of their eight two assists, most goals and most assists for the team. And then we're seeing two goals from Mark Anthony K, one from Bradley, one from Kerr, one from Missouri, kind of all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah. But besides stats, because I don't really care too much about stats, when you watch this team play, he is the man who is creating everything. He yeah. is fighting for that ball. He is leaving it all on the pitch. If they didn't have this guy, I would see them 
honestly at the bottom of the table. Well, maybe, but they have got him. Yeah, right? as simple yeah. as that. You know, look at Mukhtar, for example, another side sure. this weekend. He's he's contributed to four goals of their six mm-hmm. on the season, just six goals, right? So, top players do generally, you know, dominate games, especially at this level when when Bernadeschi is clearly in in the upper echelon of talent in MLS. He's gonna dominate games. So you know, I, I get what you're saying, but those old arguments are they too dependent on certain players? Mm-hmm. You can look at any top team with a top top player in in the world and argue that a team is too dependent on that player but what do you want them to do sometimes you find when these guys do get injured then the, the collective comes together and they actually play quite well now right now Insigne is out Bernadeschi is you know putting the, the load on his shoulders uh, for obvious reasons and you know he's, he's he's getting close right I mean don't forget it was only a week ago we're, we're saying wow that Olympico what an incredible goal that was sure. he could have scored an incredible goal this week if not oh, for the brilliant free save kick the free kick right been, mm. it would have changed everything yeah. so they're not far off yeah uh, and I'm all about it, you know, rely on him. Over rely on Bernadeschi, go right ahead because he's so good for this team. Yeah. He's the most interesting athlete in Toronto, oh, in, in my mind, sure. by a mile. Which isn't saying that much. Not saying the best. Just calm down, <laughs> Leaf Nation, but the most interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, it, it will work out. Maybe I'm just seeing the glasses half full way too much. I remember the dark days of this team. <laughs> I really remember the dark days in this team, right? And, and seeing where they're at now, and I think they'll be okay. Yeah, it is early days, guys. Only seven matches in. But TFC are taking on Atlanta at BMO Field. Hello, Tiago Almada. And I'll be chatting to Stephen Caldwell later this week, former TFC captain, so stay tuned for that. Room 442 is presented by North Star Bets. That's a win.